Another adjustment in the pronation protocol, which I usually do after the navicular, is for the cuboid. Now, prior to forced inversion of the foot, the cuboid does go inferior and lateral. But my experience is shortly after we become weight-bearing and probably in the act of learning how to walk, due to rolling your ankle into forced inversion, mechanically, the cuboid will go superior and lateral. Here's the adjustment for the most common cuboid subluxation, the superior and lateral cuboid. Now, it is true that the cuboid will go inferior and lateral when the foot is weight-bearing, but due to forced inversion at a very early age, virtually everyone's cuboid goes in a superior and lateral direction. So the doctor will take the thumb pad of the inside thumb and palpate the anterior lateral ankle, as you're seeing me do, for the cuboid bump. Once the doctor palpates the cuboid bump, you're going to slide the distal interphalangeal joint of the inside thumb onto the superior part of the cuboid. Next, you're going to take the outside hand and put it over the inside hand so that both palms face the doctor. Next, take the foot laterally off the table, 30 to 40 degrees. Take a step into the foot so that the insides of the knees are around the backs of the hands, and the backs of the hands are deep in the knees. Now the adjustment is to squeeze the hands and knees together as you extend by extending the knees all in one smooth motion from a point of tension. So contact point, outside hand over the inside hand, foot laterally off the table, step into the foot, inside of the knees around the backs of the hands, squeeze a little, pull a little of the tension, and then adjust the cuboid. For the cuboid, we need to stabilize the lateral longitudinal arch so that when the foot is weight bearing, the cuboid will have its normal or optimal range of motion. So based on measurement from a weight bearing cast or a 3D scanner, the lateral longitudinal arch will be built or stabilized at a lower end of normal range of motion so that it allows for flexible motion within the normal range.